So I'm just cutting a 45 little angle on the tip of the wire, kind of give me a head start on filing, tapering it down. Here's this file right here. Is this good? Can you guys see that? Yeah, we're good. See that? Yes. Just got to keep working that, that the size of the bottom set or whatever you're working on with a hammer. You just got to keep on working on the size of it till you get the size you want by using the angle of your hammer. Like I'm, I'm striking this one like this to close this up a little bit. So when the 
are just controlling it. By this point, you can't bend it with your fingers and, and change the shape of that. You have to bend it with or move the metal with your hammer. Because when you hammer it out, the wire hardens. It starts out dead soft and it ends up hard by the time it's done. That's why one of the reasons it's a good secure wrap, too. So all your key points in holding the wrap together are hardened out. form first and then work out the details with your hammer. And I'll always make sure this point is pointing in, in towards the stone. That provides like a spring type of say it like a it provides a pressure a spring type of pressure between this point and this point here when you push the wire down and that helps secure everything together Almost there. Very close. It's getting there. I want it to ride a little higher on this side, but not too high to come over the, that taper. I don't want it to come over that taper down because then the stone will just slip right out. It'll be no good. But a little higher. finish working the rest of the wire up here. I try to work most of the wire so that it can work and harden a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and clean my edges up now because I think I'm at the point where I want to bend it around the back. So I'm going to get the front done. You see the hammer marks. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's little like waves at the bottom that occur naturally because of the hammering. Sometimes if you get those evenly distributed, it can be left and it looks really good if they're even. Uh, even people ask for them sometimes. but. As a general rule of thumb, I go ahead and clean the edges anyhow. Because to me, part of the whole picture, part of the whole picture is picked up by our eyes that we don't 
aren't aware of. You know, our unconscious vision picks up the minute things that we don't really register in our conscious mind, and it makes up the big picture. You know, if, if there's a bunch of little dings and nicks and things that we might still see a pretty piece, but getting rid of those dings and nicks, we'll see a much prettier piece. It's just how it's always played out for me. I don't know. Makes sense to me. I'm a little crazy, but that's all right. I can deal with that. Beveled edges are really a nice addition to this kind of thing. They just give it another layer of depth. Uh, I do it both ways though, you know. I, sometimes I will bevel my edges, sometimes I won't bevel my edges, depending on how it acts with the stone and how it looks with the stone. Sorry guys, but our dogs are just having a little scrap fest. Welcome to the United Branch. <laughs> so, see, it will sit just about like that. But I'm still going to tighten up just a little bit because it slipped right through there and we don't need that happening. All I got to do is take it back to my anvil, make a few little tiny outside strikes along the outside of that and it'll pinch it just enough, uh, closer just enough to uh, keep it set a little bit lower. Just want it a little bit lower. We guarantee all our wraps so I gotta make sure this thing isn't gonna slip out, you know. It's kind of important to us. Take pride in our work. You don't want to do that too hard. I'm, you know, just a little cinch to help the wire stay where it's gonna be best living forever, <laughs> or at least as long as the wrap pulls together. And then we cap the top. Now at this point you get these wires that want to cross each other. We're going to be turning it up right here, but we can't press it into the stone and snug it up and hug the stone with it yet until we turn that wire up, especially on a piece like this. Sometimes you can, but this piece has to be turned first. So you just grab a center line. That's what I do. I try to get it as close to the middle as my eyes will allow me to. And then I'll go ahead and pinch, pinch right here together, wire to wire. Don't touch the stone with the plier. Just try to do it without damaging anything. And then you get that going right there. Now the original bale style that I learned is about two of my fingers long, about this long. But I'm gonna put a different bale on this one. I'm gonna try one of the new bales we're working with. So I try to make it just a tad bit longer so that I have some room to work with. Now making the bale is was one of the hardest parts that I, to learn for me. So I'm just gonna try to go into a little bit about 
what makes it easier for me to pound out the bale. I start at the tip, the tip of the wire. You know, that's going to be the fat, the uh, the flattest and most wide part of the taper. And then I work my way up and down the wire, getting it all even and, and nice, t nicely tapered with without any kinks or whatever, so it looks smooth. In here. Notice how I'm moving the the wire like across my anvil and keeping the hammer kind of in the same place, like a press almost, I guess, some kind of hammer press. It helps me anyhow to just get more even strikes if I do it that way. So it's about ready with this one. thing about cold forging is if you get your wire too flat, paper thin, it'll start cracking. So you don't you don't want to make it too flat. I would recommend just practicing with copper first. So at this point, <coughs> here's here's what our, our bale wire looks like at this point. And We use three stamps, or excuse me, four stamps, TKB and 925 if we're working with sterling silver. And the TKB I do individually, it's in there. I guess it's like our little brand, so we do it. People like it, that's what counts. Don't want to hit the stamps too hard because that those will kink your wire out and you have to go back in and get it straight. But there's what we got. I don't know if you guys can see the stamp in there or not. No. All right. Well, nonetheless, it's there. I promise. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and clean these edges up too before I roll it down. Here's, uh, I think, an important part is the, these edges are kind of, eh, they can be sharp if you don't clean them up and cut cord in half when people are wearing their piece and after so long, it'll wear through a cord. So I just take that sand and block and smooth them out so that there's none of that happening.
use these bell making pliers for this style. The first kind of hammering it out tends to bend the wire, so you just want to make sure everything's in place first and straightened out. And This is a great bale if you have a bead that you don't want beaded and you'd like wrapped instead and there's a hole at the top. This wrap, this bale right here has a good quality of being able to cover up a bead hole and uh, doing it nicely without too much involvement. So, I just bend this out. See that pressure? It's like a spring. It's it's holding that stone together. So here's about what the finished product. Now here, see this. This is an important note to take when you're ever you're making this style. You do not want that hook riding up off the stone. So absolutely, make sure you grab your pliers and. It is a sharp point. We got to make sure not to send the stuff out like that. So we just bend it in a little bit on the stone. No big deal. And, and that's the finished piece, other than polishing it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, and keep uh, keep an eye out. We're going to be putting more up there on different styles that. I, that I like to wrap, and I, mean, I guess we have about four of them that, that are notable. And this would be the original style, but with a changed veil. So, once again, thank you. This is Dennis. We're signing out, and I hope to see you guys today on Facebook. Have a good one.